Today I'm going to show you exactly how much cash flow option shares can make by selling put and covered call options, as well as using a poor man's covered cost strategy with leaps. I will show you every trade we did last month in June and talk through three of my favorite option trades and the option trading strategy that we use for that trade. This will help you see how you can use the same strategies to consistently generate cash flow every month in your account. Hello everyone, welcome back to My Life of Learning. My name is Randy Perez. Please know that I am not a financial advisor. This video is for educational purposes only. It's not meant to be investment advice of any kind. I am, however, a 22 plus year stock and option trader as well as real estate investor. Before we get started, I just ask one thing of you. Please hit the like button to support this channel. I'm about to give you some really awesome information I know you're going to find great benefit in. So if you appreciate the kind of material I provide for you every week on this channel, please support it by hitting the thumbs up like button. Thank you for that. Let's get started. Here you see a list of every option trade we did last month in June. The red boxes are the trades we're going to talk about in this video. I will discuss the covered call and bearish call credit spread we did in Campbell's Soup, ticker symbol CPB, after the stock was assigned to us because it experienced an overnight 8% decline. I will also talk through a poor man's covered call and naked put position that we are in with Disney, ticker symbol DIS, as well as the put option trades we did in Qualcomm, ticker symbol QCOM, which paid us an awesome return. At the bottom in the blue box, you see that because of selling options, we pocketed $12,810. In the orange box, you see that trading commission cost us $84.51. In the purple box, you see that we were charged $32.75 for some option trading data fees. And in the green box at the bottom right, you see that we pocketed $153.50 in dividends from Realty Income and BDX as a result of the covered call positions we have been in in those companies. In all, we pocketed $12,846 from selling put and covered call options as well as collecting some dividends. If you annualize that return, it equates to a 19.5% annualized non-leveraged cash on cash return. If you calculate the return on the $136,273 margin requirement, it equates to a 115% annualized return on margin. The first rate I want to talk through is the short put option that we sold and then bought back 15 days later that paid us a 47% non-leveraged annualized cash on cash return in Qualcomm. Let me talk you through why we did the trade and how it turned out for us. Here you see the daily and weekly charts of Qualcomm up to the day that we sold the 135 put option. Let's zoom in here on the left chart, the daily chart. Notice what had been going on with Qualcomm. It had recently come off a low in May of right around $123 per share. It had broke out above the red 200 moving average back in May. And the day before we made this trade, it had broken out solidly above the green 50 moving average as well. Notice down the volume section in the white rectangle that there had been nice buying pressure in Qualcomm over the previous month or so. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I like to look at multiple time frames before I enter a trade. So let's take a look at the weekly chart to see if it also supported a bullish option trade in Qualcomm. Here you see that since April of 2020, Qualcomm had been in a nice uptrend. The green 50 moving average had been serving as support for it for the most part of the year. So with Qualcomm breaking out above the green 50 and red 200 moving average on the daily chart, as well as coming down to support right at that green 50 moving average here on this weekly chart, we felt like it was a good time to sell some put options in Qualcomm that were at the money. Here's the trade we did. As you can see here, the blue rectangle on June 15th, we sold to open the third Friday of July, 135 put options. At the far right, so that we received $3.24 per share for selling those options. Well, how did it turn out? At the base of the white arrow, that's where we sold the put options. Notice that over the next three days, Qualcomm actually went down in price to as low as $132 per share. But then that buying pressure kicked in and it shot up to $144 per share. At that point, it appeared that the upward momentum was beginning to fade. Also, as you can see at the yellow line, it was beginning to approach a previous high from back in May, which is right around $145. We expected that that area would serve as resistance for Qualcomm. With us having pocketed 81% of potential profit in just two weeks, we decided to close this position out. So as you can see here in the blue box at the far left, on June 30th, we bought to close this third Friday of July 135 put option back for 61 cents per share. If you run the non-leveraged annualized cash on cash return, it equates to a 47% return. If you're curious about what the return on margin was for the $3,364 that Interactive Brokers required us to set aside this position, that annualized return on margin equates to a 380% return. A couple of things I want to point out to you here, notice that we sold this put option on a strong down day. 
that helped us pocket a little bit more return than if we had sold it on a strong up day. Also notice that we sold the put option right at a support level. Not only had Qualcomm just broke out above the green 50 moving average on the daily chart, but that previous high that had just made a couple days before, we expected that to turn into support. In the end, that's exactly what happened. Also, by looking at multiple time frames, we felt confident that if Qualcomm did come down, not only should it find support right around that 135 strike price, or worst case scenario where the red turn of moving average was on the daily chart, but the same area was where the green 50 moving average was on the weekly chart. These techniques combined help put the odds of winning on this trade drastically in our favor and it produced an awesome return for us. The next trade I want to share with you shows the power of using several option trading strategies together to manipulate positions to put them back in your favor. Here you see our current poor man's covered call position in Disney as well as an additional naked call and put option that we sold. Let me talk you through what we've been working to accomplish here in this position. If you've been watching my monthly cash flow videos for a while, you know that we initially entered this Disney position back in March of 2020. At the base of the white line towards the left side, that's where we bought an $80 leaps call option and simultaneously sold the 150 leaps call option that you see here in the white rectangle. To help decrease our call spaces, we also sold a near-term naked call option and have been rolling that option ever since. Everything was going according to plan. Disney was slowly going up, so we are able to slowly roll that naked call option up and out each month. However, where you see the yellow rectangle at? At that point, Disney shot up from around 115 per share to 180. That was a 57% increase in just a month and a half. At that point, the naked near-term call option that we had sold was pretty deep in the money. Now, we didn't want that naked call option to be assigned to us, and as a result, have 100 shares of Disney stock pulled out of our account that we didn't own. So how could we fix this trade and put the odds back in our favor of winning on this position? The yellow shaded boxes are where the naked call options are that we started rolling their strike price up as we rolled them out with the help of something else that we did. That something else is found in the green shaded boxes. There you see that we began to sell near-term naked put options to help pay for rolling those naked call options up and out. Notice where the purple arrow is that at the base, we we had sold the April 150 call option. We rolled it up and out to the June 155 call option. Then last month in June, where you see the black arrow, we rolled the 155 June call option up and out by $5 to the August 160 call option. To help pay for those rolls, notice where the red arrow is, we sold the April 175 put option. If you look at the far right under the column labeled net, we pocketed a net of $450 for selling that put option. If you follow the red arrow down, you see that we closed that April 175 put option and sold the June 175 put option. If you look to the far right of that column, notice that we pocketed a net of $245.55. Then where the orange arrow is, since Disney had been showing some weakness, we actually rolled the June 175 put option down and out to August 170. At the blue arrow, notice that we pocketed $5.68 per share for selling that August put option. As you can see at the white arrow today, Disney closed right around 177 per share. The yellow line is where our short put option is, and the white line is where our short naked call option is. So we're going to continue rolling this put and call option out until we can get the call option to expire worthless out of the money. Here with Disney, you see that we've used multiple strategies to generate a position that is throwing off really good cash flow for us. And we're using leaps, naked puts, and even a naked call option to do this. We're also using a poor man's covered call technique here. By combining these strategies, we've been able to manipulate this position so that even though it went against us, we've been able to put the odds of winning back in our favor all while generating really good returns. This position is a nice reminder of the importance of getting to know multiple techniques in option trading. The more you know, the more you can use in options to stack the odds of winning in your favor even when things have turned against you. By the way, if that was really useful what I just shared with you, then I would love it if you just give the video a like. Just bump the like button. And thank you very much for doing that. The third trade I want to share with you is actually a two-part trade. It's one that I spoke about several weeks ago in a video entitled, How to Fix a Covered Call Option. This position is in Campbell's suit. As you can see up top in the blue rectangle, since December of last year, we've been selling put options in Campbell's suit. Here in the white box is the date range where we were selling those $47 and $48 put options. At the far right of the box, where the white arrow is, that's the day that Campbell's suit was finally put into our account at $49 per share. As you can see, the price was trading at on the day it was put into our account was right around $46 per share. That price is well below both the green 50 and red 200 moving average. Also notice that this is below an area that had previously served as support back in April 
May and June, which is right around $48 per share. We don't want Campbell's Soup to be called away from us at a price lower than the price we paid for it, which was $49 per share. So we didn't want to increase our cash flow by selling call options that were below that $49 strike price. However, the challenge was that if we turn this into a covered call position, we would only have received $0.34 cents per share even if we went out to August 20th $49 call option. Keep in mind that we also wanted to line ourselves up to receive the $0.37 cent dividend you can see here in the blue box. Campbell's suit went ex-dividend on July 13th. Also notice down at the very bottom of the screen that the next earnings date is on September 1st. Please keep that in mind as we finish talking through this scenario. So what can we do to juice up our cash flow and return on top of just turning this into a covered call position? and collecting that dividend? Well, let me show you. Since there were so many areas of resistance, as you can see at the yellow line and arrows, green 50 and red 200 moving average, previous lows around $48 per share, that should also turn into resistance. With those resistance areas, we felt comfortable adding an additional bearish call option spread to this position to generate more cash flow. Here's how we did it. In the blue rectangle, under the column labeled number of contracts, notice that even though we were assigned six contracts or 600 shares of Campbell's Soup, we actually sold twice the number of call options as compared to the shares that we owned. We sold 12 contracts of the August 20th $49 call options. For that, we received 35 cents per share. However, we didn't want to leave ourselves totally exposed to these six extra call options. So if you notice at the very bottom line of the blue rectangle, we bought six of the same expiration day $55 call options which cost us nine cents per share. So we were able to net right at 25 cents per share extra after paying for that insurance as well as trading commission. As a result, the put options we've been selling, the cover call option, and now this additional bearish call option spread, as you can see at the very bottom right corner in the red rectangle, our cost basis is right at $43.97 per share. Even though Campbell Soup has dropped over 8% from what was assigned to us, we are still up overall in our Campbell Soup position. If you'd like to get an alert as soon as we do trades similar to the three that we spoke about in this video, check out the benefits of becoming a patron at the link in the description below. If you'd like to see more details on how to fix a losing option position, check out the video in the link above in the description below entitled How to Fix a Losing Option Trade. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.